how overflows. Real love is capable of being alone. I have to use the word real because what you have understood or considered love is not really love. Therefore, this word has to be used to real love. The love for the creation will transform one day into love for the creator. Love for the node will take you one day to the unknown. And love for the visible will take you one day to the love for the invisible. Take love as a ladder. You have to go far on this ladder. You have known money as love. Now accept dharma as love. You have known body as love. Go deeper to see what is deeper than the body. Love that too. Go on until you start getting the glimpses of that which is hidden in the body behind all that is visible. Then you will realize that one can be in deep love and yet be alone. In fact, one can be alone only when one is in deep love. The depth of love creates an ocean around you, a deep ocean, and you become an island. Utterly alone. Yes, the ocean goes on throwing its waves on the shore, but the more ocean crashes with its wave on your shore, the more integrated you are, the more rooted, the more centered you are. So allow this to happen. Ocean goes on throwing the waves on your shores, but the more ocean crashes with its wave on your shore, the more integrated you are, more rooted and more centered you are. This is natural. If you are, you allow the waves to arise, and strike the shore, it gives you tremendous courage, it gives you a strength and makes you more centered. Love has value only because it gives you aloneness. It gives you space enough to be alone on your own. But you have an idea of love and that idea is creating troubles, not love itself, but the idea that you have about love. The idea is that love, that in love, lovers disappear. The idea is that in love, Lovers disappear into each other, dissolve into each other. Certainly, there are moments of dissolution, but this is the beauty of life and all that is existence. When lovers dissolve into one another, the, the same are uh, the moments when they are very conscious, when they dissolve in one another, that means that they are very conscious and alert. The dissolution is not a kind of drunkenness. Instead, this dissolution is not unconscious. 
it brings great consciousness into you and releases great awareness. When the lovers dissolve into one another, it is not drunkenness, it is not unconscious. Instead, it brings tremendous consciousness and makes you more alert, re realizes great awareness. As a result, on one hand, lovers are dissolved. On the other hand, for the first time, they see their utter beauty in being alone. If you are really in love, you can realize, you can relive for the first time alone. The other defines them, their aloneness. Indeed, they define each other and they are grateful to each other. It is because of the other that they have been able to see their own selves. Lovers are grateful to one another because of the other. They see their own selves. In this process, the other becomes a mirror in which they are reflected. Lovers mirror each other. Love makes you aware of your original face, who you are really, not what has been imposed on you. Hence, it looks very contradictory and paradoxical when stated in such a way that love brings aloneness. You were thinking all along that love brings togetherness. I am not saying it does not bring togetherness. Certainly it does bring togetherness. But unless you are alone, you cannot be together. Unless you cherish your aloneness, unless you have experienced your own innerness, you cannot be together. Who is going to be together? Two persons are needed to be together. It is understood. Two independent persons are needed to be together. Such togetherness will be rich, infinitely rich, if both persons are utterly independent of one another. For their own existence, they don't need the other. When they come together, it is a great benediction. And so far, your togetherness was based on dependency on each other. You could not have your separate identity. You cannot feel happy when you are independent. If they are dependent on each other, this is not togetherness. Instead, it is slavery, a kind of a bondage, and bondage does not give fulfillment. If they are dependent on each other, clinging to one another, then the bliss of togetherness cannot happen. Clinging brings possessiveness. If they do not allow each other to be alone, if they do not allow each other a space enough to grow, in order to grow, a space is needed. In the forest where trees are very close to one another, they grow taller in order to reach to the sunlight. But where they are, there is a, a space between them for, to, for them to grow. They grow in volume circumference. They get more, not like a tall, but instead they grow all around. 
So if they do not allow each other to be alone, if they do not e allow each other enough space to grow, they are enemies, not lovers. And this is what we see all around in our, in your so-called love relations. This way, they cannot help each other to find their own souls, their own beings. When you allow the space to your lover or beloved, you are allowing him or her to grow. And in that, they will be able to discover their being. They will be able to know who they are, what kind of... Then, if you do not allow them, then what kind of love is this? Have you really understood what love is? That does not allow each other space to discover their own aloneness, their own soul, being. And unless you discover your being, unless you cherish your aloneness, creativity cannot help. When it is said God is the creator, in his aloneness, he created the entire creation. It may be just a fear of being alone that they cling to each other. But the real love knows no fear. Real love is capable of being alone. The togetherness of love is important because it teaches you to grow. It provides you enough space to blossom and spread your beauty and fragrance. Then, if you are together, there is a tremendous benediction and joy. Real love is capable of being alone, utterly alone. It provides enough space to each other to grow, to blossom, to manifest its creativity. And out of that aloneness grows the flower of togetherness. Togetherness is a benediction, is a flower, but it is the manifestation of aloneness. If you do not know how to be alone, if you do not know to cherish your aloneness, your togetherness will be meaningless. It will be simply position, a slavery, and love is not slavery, love is not position, love is total freedom, total freedom to grow, to blossom, and then when you are together, it's a benediction and a 